Hey, welcome everybody. So as I said, this is about how I learned to invest in real estate as a busy parent, but quite honestly, this is just learning tips for busy people. We all want to jam in all the cool things that life has to offer. Um, and thinking about doing something new, like investing in real estate, a lot of people stop before they actually get started because it's quite intimidating to learn something new. We think that we have to read every book on the subject, for instance, or perhaps you think that you need to replace your like really precious sleep hours with learning hours, which I'm just going to go ahead and say that you should never do that. Sleep is so, so important for us to be able to thinking our best and showing up the people that we love in our life. Um, I also was a busy parent, right? I didn't want to miss these like really cute moments with my two kids. Um, I didn't want to replace those with, with learning hours, but I wanted to be this confident investor. I think we all do. We want to be able to deploy our money into investments, into real estate and know that it's working. It's hardest know that we've made really good decisions. We've done our due diligence. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about four key strategies. Now, these four key strategies are retrospectively looking back. I did not have these when I started the process. and But looking back, I can kind of see how I got it all done. And it makes sense with some of the research that I'm going to bring up that these are four ways to, you can kind of like optimize learning as a busy person. And I'm not going to talk about specific time blocking and productivity strategies because everyone is so different. These are really broad concepts that you can apply to your life for just about anything. So I did this while I was starting a business on the side of my nine to five engineering job. I also purchased our first rental property. We actually hacked it into a duplex, lived in one part of it, then moved out. Now I have two tenants in there. I also invested in real estate syndications for the first time in passive investments like in apartment buildings and self-storage and even in some hotels all the while. I'm raising two fairly wild children, um, one of them of which was born during that pathway, during that process, during the last five years of my life. I also prioritized getting my family out to do these adventures that mean a lot to me, where we're unplugging, we're going on week-long rafting trips, we're getting the kids in the outdoors, getting the, them to experience and have these like really important moments of learning development for them and just connection with our family. So I really wouldn't sacrifice any of that as I went. And looking back, sometimes I'm like, how did I do it all? And on top of all of this, I made time to prioritize myself even and my time that I want to spend in the mountains, specifically running. So I kind of upped my running to be able to come an ultra marathoner. That sounds fantastic, but it's really just like running marathons with a little bit of extra. But I like doing it here in places like the mountains. I would run around Mount Hood, which is my backyard mountain here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, all the while, I took the time to learn, right? And I learned to be able to be confidently investing in these new investments, new asset classes, to be able to run my own business, to be able to spin up everything along the way. So let's get started. The first one is that you, this is going to take a focused effort. But well, I want you to think about it in this way. So re studies have shown us that it takes more time to perform the less time we've practiced. So in other words, the less practice we have, the longer it takes us to do something. This makes logical sense, I'm sure. I can't just like pick up the violin and start playing it. I have not practiced that, right? But this feels like in the beginning that you're not confident about what you're doing, right? So how can we work to gaining that confidence? In other words, it takes us a long time to be able to perform or to do something at the level that we want to do it. And it takes us a, a, an even longer time to be able to do that thing with more confidence, okay? So just two different ways of looking at that same, but how much time? So there is a special window in there, right? Where you can spend a good amount of time learning something and you've gained a lot of expertise or a lot of knowledge on that subject. Well, I think most people would say like, how many hours does it take to, to become an expert in something, and we'll all say 10,000 hours, right? This was something that Malcolm Gladwell brought to the forefront of research. He found that to be able to become an expert at something in a very niche and competitive field, like violining, like Olympic level athletics, that you needed to spend at least 10,000 hours. Now, as the 
as that went down the pipeline, as the, the telephone played, we soon turned this into that everyone needs to spend 10,000 hours to be good at anything. When really like to be able to cross the finish line here with my kid toe of the last 50K that I did this past weekend, actually, I did not spend what the equivalent of 10,000 hours, right? I just barely did it enough to feel confident, to feel good, to feel like the athlete that I want to be. So how long is that? Research has shown that this is 20 hours. This is a much more attainable time period, 20 hours, right? That's less than a full-time week of work. So let's invert that curve and look at it a bit, bit differently for, that applies to more of us instead of performance, right? We're looking at how good we are. We wanna be quite good at something, especially like investing because being good at investing means we're having the confidence and the clarity of making the right decisions that feel good for us and our goals. So the amount of practice time, right, that it takes to be able to get to a point where we feel really good is actually not that long. And we're looking at this little window here. This is that precious 20 hours that research has found that if you can spend 20 focused hours in something, not sporadic over the course of two or three years, right, pretty focused hours learning something, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge, a lot of confidence and expertise in that. Um, this is really important because you can see that there's marginal gains after that, right? We're going to continue to learn and to grow and to make better decisions, but this 20 hours is the most important. So think about that. That definitely helped me realize that like, I don't have to devote my entire life to being, to being able to do this. Um, I don't have to sacrifice the things that keep me a healthy person as a professional in a field that I wanted to grow and develop in, as well as a parent who I, I didn't want to neglect that, certainly. So this could look like two hours a week. That would take you 10 weeks to be able to get to this threshold. You could also spend one and a half hours a day if you wanted to fast track this, and it would be done in just about one month. So as I look back on the way that I learned about these things, I would slip in hours of reading books, right? I would slip in hours of taking notes on the way that other people did investing on uh, business, how to run a business in investments because you treat your investments like a business if you're an investor. And I definitely had a lot of coffee along the way uh, because that fuels me. Um, so to be able to do this, pick one, three to five resources. This is, this is a big tip. So 20 hours, don't go pick yourself 20 books to be able to consume in that amount of time. Pick three to five resources. Here are some of the ones that um, have come across my path over the time period. You can take a screenshot of these book titles. Um, these range from nitty gritty technical real estate investing to just like, what are the things that matter in your life? Because if you're getting into investing, you're probably wanting to make a big shift in your life. You're wanting to change your life for the better. So to be able to do that with different topics, different, you know, where you're hitting the technical concepts as well as the sort of soul fulfilling concepts, looking back at your thoughts around money is really important to get that holistic view. And we're going to talk about why that's important with the next tip here. But the second thing I want you to do is to time block just learning time. This is important that you're not time blocking a specific time. Task. I'm not going to say underwrite four deals or look at two investment summaries or read 300 pages. I'm just going to say like learning blocks and give yourself a buffer there because research has shown that when we give ourselves flexibility in there, we're able to learn the amount that our brain is able to absorb in that time period better. And you're able, better able to say like, oh, I'm feeling like I need X type of learning right now instead of this other highly technical one, right? You're matching it to what you need at the moment. And that's all going to help you absorb those concepts even better. So just tiny little tips and tricks. Okay. The number two topic here is when do you learn best? So learning for you looks like um, basically like how are you going to learn at different times in your day? So I like thinking about this with our chart of daily mood fluctuations. And this is research has shown, of course, that you can map out your energy levels throughout the day. It, and you might want to be able to think about where you can learn about different concepts, depending on your general energy levels throughout the day. So for instance, for technical concepts, I wanted to learn technical things when I have increasing energy, when I can like really focus on something really detailed and nitty gritty. So I'm doing things that involve numbers and calculations, maybe during this time period, um, looking at market data, all of these things that to better understand real estate investing specifically. 
Um, and then when I think about sort of waning hours of energy, I might think about more soul fulfilling concepts like Mindful Millionaire book by Lisa Peterson has been really good for me to be able to like reflect on my negative money beliefs and how that stemmed from childhood experiences because I can make better investing decisions along the way. Again, this is like matching the learning task to how you're feeling in the moment. And this is going to be able to help you absorb that information even better. Um, now, this is a note. This was my pre-kid like cycle, right? Ours are all different these days. Post-kid cycle looks a little bit more like this. I don't have as many peaks as I did before in terms of high energy moments. So I really think about even picking out my different activities to optimize. For instance, when I'm going down that, that energy hill, I'll go for a run. I often run in the afternoons these days because it gives me a little blast of energy so that I can show up for my kids in the evenings, right? I might look to doing that personal development in the evening time and technical concepts in the morning. I may have less opportunities or less windows to be able to work with here, um, but we all have opportunities to work with. Okay. Tip number three is to treat yourself like a, and then insert the identity that you aspire to become. And now as busy professionals, we probably want to achieve a lot of different things. I want to become a really confident investor. Um, I want to do well at my job, but I also have personal goals. Um, for instance, like I started treating myself like an athlete. I referred to myself as an athlete. I'm an athlete. I athletes get in their, their training plans. They get in their workouts, right? I also refer to us as like an adventure family. Even though we have professional jobs, I work from home, I work in front of a computer these days, I still find the time to take my family out on the adventures that mean a lot to me. And I also treat myself like an investor. This is important because I never identified as an investor before. I was someone who kind of like put some money aside into my investments, but I started telling myself I'm, I'm an investor. I would introduce myself that way. This is a good way to start changing your brain to knowing that you're doing it. So to be able to learn and identify yourself as an investor, this might look something like tracking your investments like an investor would. This could look like just tracking your net worth, projecting it out into the future, right? You're taking the time to be able to say, if I got X returns on these investments and I projected that into the future, this is what that's gonna look like. This is gonna give you a lot of motivation as you go. It's gonna make you feel like you are an investor and you can be able to do these, these um, really highly technical things. The second thing is that I want you to meet other investors, just like I met other athletes to be able to run with. I met other adventure families to go on whitewater rafting trips with, with my family. It is so important that you network with other people who are living that lifestyle and who are doing the thing that you aspire to do. Now, at first I was like, I don't know many investors, but I began to find them. I began to go to meetups. There's different kinds of ways you can talk to people just casually at, um, at different events. Um, I went to several conferences, one of which I met Julie and Annie for the first time here at Good Egg Investments. Um, I also just invited people out for coffee. I still do this. When I meet someone who's a real estate investor, I'm like, oh, let's go out for coffee. I wanna learn your story, how you did things, especially if they're in my hometown. Um, now, if you're someone who doesn't know how to do this right away, you don't have any friends, you think you don't have any friends, I guarantee you, you do. There's people that are closet real estate investors. Um, you can come to our weekly casual virtual meetup. We don't have any agenda for this. We just answer questions. Uh, we call it the pop over and we really love meeting other investors here. You can talk to other investors. You can talk to me. I'm sort of an intermediate investor. Maybe I'd call myself. Um, we often have other team members there who are maybe more expert investors, but it's just a way to like ask questions, listen in on other investor questions and get started thinking about this and meeting other people. Okay. This fourth one I'm hesitant to put in here and it's to track your wins. I have, I understand the value of this so deeply because when I do this little bits of it, I'm able to look back and say like, oh my gosh, I am making real progress here. I am learning this thing. And despite my busy life, like, oh my gosh, I just ran a 50K this weekend. That's incredible. I need to write that down. But admittedly, like I'm still working on this. This is not my strong suit. So here are some ways that I've heard of other people doing this. For instance, Ed Sheeran, 
uh, will write every win that he has or every success or achievement on a bottle of wine. And he and his wife put them up somewhere and they're probably awesome. Um, mansion or estate. I know he has a bar on his own property out there um, and over in the UK. But this way he can look back up at like all of those achievements. So when you're having a really down day and you feel like you're not doing anything or making any progress or you're not worth anything, you can look back up at those wine bottles and say, oh, I've come a long, long way. Um, an investor just last night or two nights ago, we got to meet with five or six investors in Portland, Oregon for an investor meetup. It was so, so good to meet people in person. She said that she just kept a financial notebook and all of her financial stuff she would write in there, especially her wins. So if she made $10,000 on an investment, if she invested $5,000 and in the beginning, she had $30,000 of credit card debt. And she's talked about how she wrote down every time she made payments on there and every time she moved herself out of that position. And today she's an accredited investor. That means she has a net worth of over a million dollars um, and has made huge progress. I've also heard of people putting up post-it notes on their mirror. And then as soon as they get probably a little too wet from your showering, they will tape them or glue them into a notebook to be able to look back at those. But I would love to take suggestions. Um, please put it in the chat or in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, I need more suggestions to be able to do this more consistently. Um, so these four elements are really just ways that you can commit to changing your life. It can be done even with a really, really busy lifestyle. Um, I know that just about every investor I know has, has done this while doing many, many other things. It is definitely possible. Um, but there's a lot of support out there and a lot of resources here at Good Egg. We do a lot of things like this session, Good Egg Live. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can join us every other Wednesday for these sessions. Um, pop into the Q&A, see other investors out here. We also have those weekly popover events. This is really fun, casual, kind of like your office hours where you can meet other investors and meet us ask questions, no need to RSVP, just show up. Um, and the Life and Money Show, we have a podcast. Um, we do Laundry and Learn, which is like Annie and Julie, the two experts behind Good Egg Investments, who are my mentors along this journey, um, just kind of fold their laundry on Friday afternoons on YouTube and talk about what's on their mind with real estate. So we've got a lot of resources out here. Like and subscribe this on YouTube. That's really helpful to help us share this with other people as we go. Um, and here's a QR code for our full calendar if you're interested in seeing that. So if you're ready to take this to the next step, if you're ready to learn more about investing, we have great ways to do it, great ways to connect with our team. You can join our investor club. It's totally free. Um, we have offerings for both non-accredited and accredited investors. That means like beginning investors and expert investors. Um, just go ahead and head over to our website, goodegginvestments.com um, backslash invest. You can see our track record at backslash track record record um, and get all kinds of free resources, including a seven day free passive real estate investing course. I talk to people about this is a great way to learn. You can read this email on one of your like 10 minute work breaks. You're going to get in a lot more juicy learning time uh, in those first 20 hours. And this is a great way to get that started. Well, if anybody has any questions, um, I'm going to check down on the Q and a let's see. Um, and, but that is it for today. I would just love to hear more about how everybody else is learning and growing as they're doing this, learning any advanced concepts as you go. Please put your comments down below and let's help each other do this.